This week marks 58 years since the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. It happened more than 800 miles away in Dallas, Texas, but there are connections to Kennedy right here in Kentuckyana. How? We'll show you in tonight's WHAS 11 Vault. John F. Kennedy died at approximately 1 o'clock Central Standard Time today here in Dallas. Assassinated while riding in a motorcade in downtown Dallas, all eyes were on the Kennedy news and the man behind the announcement. I was able to rally for the first part of it, but then as the questioning went on, I, uh, it would be noted that I did choke up considerably. Mac Kildoff was the assistant White House secretary and inside the third car of the motorcade when Kennedy was shot. 20 years and 10 jobs later, he found himself in Kentucky, working as the editor of the Beattyville Enterprise, a newspaper in eastern Kentucky. He sat down with WHAS 11 to talk about the moment all eyes were on him. With her now? Uh, just I think I got a little bit angry when uh, someone asked me, uh, what was Mrs. Kennedy's reaction? And I just kind of looked at them, you know, as much as to say, well, she's thrilled with the whole thing. I, you know, it was, a, it was a foolish question. Killed off called Kennedy a friend, as well as commander in chief. He remembered the president well. He also remembered the way he says he could never pronounce his name. He said, I know it's killed off. He says, but it's Mac killed off. He said, and that's just too much. He says, all I can come up with is McDuff and McDuff is going to be. And it was always Macduff. Decades after the assassination, other well-known Kentuckians would reflect on their memories from that day in 1963, including the former Archbishop of Louisville, Thomas Kelly. The first thought was, it's, it's not possible, that, you know, how you reject things. And, and yet, all of a sudden, it was true. And, the, and that bright and classy fellow was gone from us. Mitch McConnell was in college when he got the news. I was a senior at L, and I was watching a fraternity intramural football game, which went on from 12 to 1. And just as we were leaving the field, somebody came up and said, did, did you hear that the president had been shot? And like everybody else, just total disbelief. Fred Wishy was a reporter at the time. This was long before his days as the weekend gardener. So what stood out to him? The silence. And then the news director said, well, let's get reaction. Let's, so we headed downtown. And the first thing that struck me was Louisville was just deathly quiet. I've never seen the city that quiet. And you would see people weeping openly, and they weren't ashamed of it. Some would say Kennedy had a connection to Kentucky. Built during a trip to Louisville in 1962, historic video captures the crowds on Broadway, holding signs and lining the streets around the Brown Hotel. All were hoping for just a glimpse of the president. It would be his last time in the Derby City. It came only one year before his tragic death. But Kennedy's legacy didn't end there. Nothing could be more appropriate than that there should be a living memorial one that has vitality and usefulness for all of us. Kentucky would name a newly constructed bridge in his honor. Dedicated to a better and greater Indiana, a better and greater Kentucky, and a better and greater Ohio Valley. Thank you. Well, that bridge, which carries I-65 across the Ohio River, was unnamed when President Kennedy was assassinated in November. But only four days after it happened, the Kentucky governor at the time, Burt Combs, announced the bridge would be named in the president's honor. It was dedicated and open to traffic just a couple of weeks later. Well, if you enjoyed this weekly look back at Kentuckiana's most memorable moments, we have a lot more to share with you. You can watch all of those stories right now on our website or on our YouTube page.